2023 is shaping up to be a horrible year for the economy. We have big bank CEOs such as David Solomon and Jamie Dimon coming up and warning the people that we might be headed for a deep recession in 2023. Additionally, the bond yield have also inverted and is the loudest it has been for 40 plus years. A bond yield inversion usually signals a recession and the fact that it is so loud means that a deep recession is probably coming for us. Now usually, the Federal Reserve can just lower interest rates and try to soothe the drop in economic output, try to bring the people along you know, and slowly try to come out from the recession. However, this is impossible at today's stage. This is because the world and the US is facing record high inflation. This is because we have just come out from a supply chain shock that happened after the COVID-19 lockdowns and after all the money printing and the Russian-Ukraine war and the global crisis that's going on right now, it is impossible for the Fed to lower interest rates because that would really drive inflation up. So we can all decide to keep cash. However, I would like to take this opportunity to start a portfolio based on the perfect sector to invest in. Now, you would think that how is there a sector in this economic situation where it's perfect to invest in? I have the answer. The sector is consumer staples or more specifically, the consumer packaged goods. If you can look at this picture, all these companies belong in the consumer packaged goods industry. Do you notice something? Well, this something is that all these companies own a lot of brands that we all use every single day like Dawn Detergent, Tide Pots, Bounty, Briar's Ice Cream, Knorr's, Coleman's Mustard, Vaseline, Nestle and Nescafe Coffee, Cadbury Chocolate, Kraft Cheeses and so on. All these brands are staples in our homes and because of this all these companies can survive through economic recessions through rain or shine because we all have to use their products irregardless and take a look at how these stable businesses have thrived throughout the decades just look at all these products and look at how long these companies have been around for P&G has been founded since 1837 Arm and Hammer or Church and Dwight has been founded since 1846 and even Unilever has been founded since 1929. All these are 100 years and above companies. Well, Unilever isn't at the 100 year mark yet, but pretty soon they have survived through decades, through world wars, some even through the American Civil War, through the Cold War, all the recessions, and this is thanks to the nature of the industry. Now we'll take a look at just how great this sector is during times of recessions. So as you can see, this chart by Barclays shows that consumer staples outperform the market greatly during times of recession. And the outperformance isn't even like small. They outperform greatly and the majority of the returns of these stocks come from recessionary times. And the reason why these stocks perform so well is because of their pricing power. Because usually during recessions, a lot of consumers would cut back on discretionary spending. However, these companies have the ability to be able to charge top dollars for their prices because their products are simply needed in our homes. So take a look at some of these articles. Procter & Gamble's pricing power leads to bids on both top and bottom lines. Unilever raises guidance, but is downbeat on Europe and China consumer sentiment. And Rakit Bankiza's price rises help offset falling demand for disinfectants. All these are a result of the pricing power that these companies have over consumers so that they are able to generate returns, generate stable top and bottom line growth for their shareholders. The second reason why I would love to invest in this sector is because of dividends. Before I talk more about the dividends that is offered by the consumer packaged goods stocks, I would like to echo what Mr. Kevin O'Leary has mentioned about dividend paying stocks by showing you this video of him unique experience. Um, my mother used to take a third of her paycheck and put it into large cap dividend paying stocks and corporate credit back in the early 60s. And when she died, 
this portfolio had existed for 50 years and as an executive the first time I got to look at it she'd hidden it from both of her husbands it was amazing if, if dividend paying stocks and corporate credits over 50 years you can't find an index that beats that and so when I started to do some research I found out one interesting fact that changed my investment philosophy forever over the last 40 years 51 percent sorry over the last 40 years 71 percent of the market's returns came from dividends not capital appreciation so rule one for me is I'll never own a stock that doesn't pay a dividend, ever. Now that was a great interview from Forbes of Kevin O'Leary as he talks about the importance or the benefits of owning dividend paying stocks. And we can take a look at some of these companies. Look at PNG's 132 years of dividend payment and 66 years of consecutive increases. Well, I couldn't find much data on Unilever, but you can see from the charts that these companies really do increase their dividends year over year, irregardless of whether there's a recession or whatnot. Because these businesses, the consumer packaged industry, is really powered by their pricing power, returning investors dividends and share buybacks and capital appreciations so that you know they outperform during times of market underperformance. And here's an article from Wolf Research in CNBC, which says that dividend aristocrats trounces markets when a recession hits. This is because if we buy a dividend stock, we are able to have a bottom line as to how much we will be able to get in terms of investment returns from that year, compared to stocks that do not pay a dividend. So if we look at the list of dividend aristocrats, you can see that the largest among these are the consumer staples industry or and a lot of these stocks are actually consumer packaged goods such as Procter & Gamble, Coca-Cola, Colgate, Hormel, Kimberly Clark, Clorox, McCormick and Church and & Dwight. All these are amazing consumer defensive consumer packaged goods companies and of course there are other really good dividend stocks as well such as you know um, Johnson & Johnson, AbbVie, um, S&P Global. However, personally, I prefer to invest in a sector that is easier to understand, which for me personally is consumer staples. I will probably make a video about a cir your circle of competence in the future, but for me, I am most confident in consumer staples, which is why I chose to populate my portfolio with the consumer packaged goods industry. With that, I would like to announce the start of my portfolio. So as you can see, I've actually started accumulating stocks a bit earlier this year. Um, so far, I have three stocks in my portfolio, the largest of which is Church & Dwight. Church & Dwight is an American uh, CPG stock, which mainly focuses on household products. Their main brand is Arm & Hammer, which I'm sure a lot of you would know. Um, they are one of the earliest uh, companies that started packaging baking powder to be sold. So I have about 900 um, US dollars worth of stock in Church & Dwight, about 11 shares. Um, my second largest position is actually in Unilever. It's a British uh, consumer packaged goods company once again. And I bought this stock during a time when the CEO announced that they were bidding for GSK's consumer arm and shareholders reacted pretty negatively to that. So as the stock dropped, um, I bought because the deal was later cancelled, but the shares have not returned to its pre-announcement of the bid levels. So I bought it and so far it's yielded me quite decent returns. And finally, I bought shares in another stock, which is also a UK-based um, consumer packaged goods company, same as Unilever, called Racket Bank Keezer. Now, the reason why I bought this stock is because personally, I have interned in Racket Bank Keezer before and there are some brands that I really love from this company, such as Dettol and Durex and the reason why their shares are slightly cheaper now and that you don't see a PE is because they've made a really costly acquisition back in I think 2019 yeah I think it's 2019 they made they acquired this company from uh, Bristol Myers called Meat Johnson Nutrition and it isn't really turning out well for them and they had to draw down a lot of the uh, they had to go through impairment for their, for their acquisition of the company because they severely overpaid for the company. However, I do not think that these are cash flow affecting 
factors and it, so if you look at the company they currently do not have a PE but I think that this is a, a misleading number at the surface which is why I decided to dip my toes into the company uh, with by buying one share of course they are saddled with a lot of debt after the acquisition and they are actively trying to spin off the company if possible so I also subscribe to an app on my phone in order to let me track my dividend payments and I think this is a really convenient app it's called dividend tracker um, you, it, it is a subscription uh, that you need to pay but it's not too pricey it's about I think 15, 12 15 US dollars a year I've subscribed to this when I started buying stocks last year so um, it's, it's not a very expensive subscription and I, and I think it's pretty worth it because it allows me to know when I will get my dividends and also the X dates and whatnot. So as you can see, I'm receiving $8 annually from Church and Dwight. Of course, I do not stay in the US. I am not a US citizen, which is why my stocks are subject to a 30% dividend withholding tax. Okay, so that's why even though Church and Dwight is my largest position, I am subject to a dividend withholding tax of 30%, which might mute my dividend returns a bit but i think overall its shares uh, its capital appreciation will be able to you know uh, cover this lack of dividends which i will explain in another video i really like church and dot as a company that's why it is also my heaviest position in my portfolio so far um as you can see racket oh uh will pay me the no actually unilever will pay me the dividends next the next most dividends next at nine us dollars um annually and finally racket will pay me the least i wanted to add two more shares to racket the other day but i didn't buy it so i i know it says three shares there but it's, it's just one share i only own one share of racket bank user and at the time of this recording in two days i will be paid another quarterly dividend by unilever so with this i would like to end the video i plan to do a whole series on the different types of um, consumer packaged goods, what metrics are used to buy outperforming consumer packaged goods companies, and also maybe some case studies about previous mergers and acquisitions from all these CPG companies out there. So if you're interested in this type of content and also following my investing journey throughout the 2023 recession, please do hit like on this video and subscribe so that I know that my content, there's a demand for contents like this and I can make more videos for my audience. So thank you so much and have a nice day.